In the previous episode, we covered Lesage's concept for gravity. Now, one of the implications of these types of models are that there should be a gravitational shielding effect, which will arise when dealing with three or more matter bodies. This effect arises because a third body will shadow some of the momentum flux passing between two bodies on opposite sides of itself. The available flux is therefore lowered by a fraction that depends on the degree of absorption by the third body. Now a cursory review of the literature shows it is generally accepted that there is no gravitational shielding effect. Modernese states flatly, experiments starting from the classical measure of Majorana have shown that the gravitational force is not influenced by any medium. And you will often find this statement repeated, but it is not correct. Majorana reported very definitive positive effects. In an unusual development, Lesage's theory became intertwined with an alternative theory of gravitation, also involving shading effects, which was proposed by Majorana in 1920. Although kinetic theories of gravitation were very popular in the 19th century, nobody had endeavoured to detect the absorption of gravitation up to the 1890s. In 1897, Austin and Twing made the first known experimental test of the existence of a change of gravitational force due to a shielding effect. No effect was detected. Several other experiments were conducted in the early 20th century with no positive effect until the Italian physicist announced that he had been able to observe a decrease in the weight of a body when it was enclosed with a thick shield of matter. Majorana spent most of his years searching for gravitational absorption. He is actually better known for his research related to the second principle of special relativity. He attempted to detect changes in the speed of light emitted or reflected by moving bodies. Despite his view that he should detect a difference in the speed of light, he was actually able to confirm that the speed of light is independent of the speed of its source. As the results were opposite to the one he was attempting to validate, it demonstrates that he was a very careful and meticulous experimenter. Majorana's hypothesis was that gravitation was due to the flow of gravitational energy from all bodies into their surrounding space. The outward flow of gravitational energy required some kind of gradual transformation of matter, analogous to radioactivity, but Majorana supposed that this transformation was very slow and difficult to detect. He also thought that matter was not transparent to this gravitational flux. Gravitational energy would be absorbed by matter and transformed into heat. All bodies would therefore be subject to a heating effect, and this effect would only become noticeable on large bodies due to the volume to surface area ratio. Majorana at the time believed that this accounted for stellar energy. According to this theory, each body is continually emitting gravitational rays in all directions. Consider a slab of material with a surface and a certain thickness and a particular density. In one dimension, this body emits gravitational rays with a momentum flux in each direction. This flux will depend upon the properties of the body and it will be approximately proportional to its thickness and its density when self-absorption is small. Let's assume it is proportional to the mass of the body. There is no net force as the emissions on both sides are uniform. If we now introduce a second slab with a different density and thickness, when the rays from A pass through B, partial absorption will take place. Equally, the rays emitted by B will also pass through A and be partially absorbed. These absorption rays will impart momentum in the opposite direction of travel. And when you calculate the net force created by A and B, it is mathematically equivalent to Lesage's theory. Now you might assume that the shielding effect between these two theories will be very different, but in fact, when considering it in both one dimensions and three dimensions, 
they do turn out to be identical. Majorana was not really clear about the mechanism of gravitation he envisaged. Sometimes he referred to gravitational energy flux, and sometimes to particles, and in his later years he referred to these particles as gravitons. He remarked that his particles would have strange properties because when they hit matter, they must produce a backward impulse. He was not a theoretician and devoted the majority of his life to experimentation. So it must be made clear that he wasn't really concerned with the mechanism of the gravitational absorption. So he focused mainly on testing his hypothesis. In order to test his general assumption, Majorana tried to detect the reduction of weight in a lead ball when it was surrounded by 100 kilograms of liquid mercury. The change he was looking to detect was a reduction of the mass of his one kilogram lead ball by one microgram. His lab experiments and methodology was so precise that this still stands as the most important positive lab evidence for gravitational absorption. His lab experiments were also never criticized. In fact, it was very difficult to suggest any source of error that he had not taken into account. Majorana went on to perform new experiments in a brand new lab, but never published his results. At the time, other interests took over and he ended up being involved in the development of communication by ultraviolet and infrared radiation for military purposes. No one has ever repeated his original experiments. Now, although many scientists have attempted to detect shielding during eclipses, none used the rigor that Majorana did in his laboratory, and results from these eclipse experiments varied from positive to a negative effect, and some detected no effect at all. If there are shielding effects, precise measurements of the constant g would not be consistent, and this would result from unaccounted variations in the positions of the sun, moon, and nearby environmental massive objects during the experiments. A review of literature does indeed show that these variations in G do exist. Giles summarized the most precise claims in the table and noted that these values exclude each other within the limits of errors quoted. If we weigh each of these results equally, then it is clear that we do not know the value of g with an uncertainty of 10 to the minus 4, as is otherwise suggested by individual measurements. Precise measurements of the value of g in underground chambers show a greater value of g than those made on the surface of Earth, but these values are not accepted to be consistent with any shielding effect. Tom van Flanden, in his paper on gravity, pointed out that a good example of shielding comes from the two Lagos satellites. Both are in a high enough orbit and with a mass of each 400 kilograms to remove any effect from atmospheric drag or solar radiation pressure. Both are in nearly circular orbits, roughly at an orbit of one Earth radius above the surface, and have an orbit period of about four hours. Lagos 1 orbits retrograde with an inclination of 110 degrees and processes forward. Lagos 2 with a direct orbit of 53 degrees and processes backwards. As a result, Lagos 2 has an eclipse season, and this is when the satellite enters the Earth's shadow on every orbit for about 40 minutes. And these are more frequent and longer than for Lagos 1. As the orbit processes, its orbit changes, and it may mean that the satellite does not enter the shadow zone for months at a time. The significance of the eclipses for this discussion is that these are periods when any gravitational shielding effect that may exist would be operative. Of course, several other types of non-gravitational forces also operate during these eclipses. Solar radiation pressure shuts off only during eclipses as does the thermal radiation from the Earth. Light, temperature and charged particles are all affected. Both of these satellites exhibit anomalous in-track accelerations that were unexpected. The average negative acceleration throughout the data 
can be explained as a combination of radiation, thermal, and charge drag forces, but the data shows substantial deviations from this average drag, especially during eclipse season, and these are not easily explained. Some factors such as rocket exhaust at the time of injection into the orbit may have dirtied the satellite surface, causing its surface to absorb more light energy and radiate this while in the eclipse season, causing the acceleration. Lagos 2 was launched to avoid any of these problems, yet here the anomalies are still present. This increases the suspicion that it might be gravitational shielding. This graph shows the acceleration plot and the calculated theoretical shielding. And as you can see, they seem to line up quite nicely. What is important about Majorana's work is that it was the first proof of a shielding effect. It is by no means a definitive proof, as we can see there are examples where you could question where some of the effects that we claim to be shielding are shielding. But, nonetheless, there are anomalies that clearly indicate that there is something going on that we cannot explain. In the next episode, we will explore Tom van Flanderen's model of gravity, which will combine parts of Majorana's work with parts of Lesage's work and bring it into the modern era. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.